How can finding nothing be the best possible result? Uh, no, I want to can you show us how to use maths to get free money? I got hooked on a drug once. Now, I want to take you back in time. We know sound travels as a wave. We've all been there, guys. Had that moment when you're faced with 15 selfies and you're trying desperately to decide which one is the one. Join me on my journey of madness. We begin at stage one, lust. I would like you to show me how brain cells communicate. Our brain is a symmetry detector. After we've taken a selfie, like our one here, our eyes immediately scan the facial features in the photo. And this image is then projected into the visual processing centers of our brain, right here at the back of the head. When I clap my hands, I start a molecular Mexican wave, passing the vibrations of air particles knocking into each other from here to your ears. All your most important axons actually look like this. So the string in the middle is the axon, but sections of it are coated in insulation. Now, in the gaps where the axon's exposed, that's where the channels are. You can look it up on their website, and I'm going to use the front row as my calculator screen. <laughs> Your odds of winning the UK lottery are 0 0.000017. percent I'd like you all to do something for me. I'd like to take yourselves back to when you were children. That wonder you felt the very first time you saw a magic show. All you need to do is start a Mexican wave. Everyone's going to join in, and it's going to cross the Bloomsbury as quickly and as silently as possible. Are you ready? Go. Nice. Nice. I make that about five seconds. Now your brain cells do something really similar. Now, scientists in the 19th century knew that light also travels like a wave. It reflects, it refracts, it interferes with itself. Not like that. <laughs> Using a big scanner, scientists were able to see the parts of the brain that light up when people are madly in love. And I happen to have the results right here. <laughs> the By and large, our genes are such that the human face is designed to develop symmetrically. But as we grow in the womb and throughout childhood, environmental stress, infections and disease disrupt the expression of our genes, resulting in tiny facial imperfections called asymmetries. You point your rocket at a patch of Mars so small and so far away, it's like taking a dart in this theatre and throwing it and hitting a grain of sand on a dartboard in London. You travel 550 million kilometres through the full radiation of space to get to Mars. You punch into the Martian atmosphere, blazing a trail of plasma and light at 21,000 kilometres an hour, fast enough to do London to Sydney in 50 minutes. The moment you realise none of us are getting our Hogwarts acceptance letters. <laughs> Which is why in space, no one can hear you scream, but they can see you go... <laughs> now! The first area is the caudate nucleus. It helps us <laughs> expect <laughs> and detect rewards. In this case, love. The second area is the ventral tegmental area. <laughs> this is but why does it even matter to us? Like, when's the last time you walked past an attractive guy or girl on the street, turned to your best friend and whispered, God, they are so symmetrical-like. <laughs> but in fact, there is another critical facial feature, one that we don't even know we're looking for. Symmetry. If you were to unravel all of the wiring that's tangled up in here, you'd get round every single street in London ten times. Say we go down to the quantum level, to the particles that make up atoms. Say we go down to an electron. Say I took an electron and I sent that at a barrier. Well, there's a small but significant chance that this electron can just pass through the barrier like a ghost and come through on the other side as if nothing happened. It's called quantum tunneling. And that's kind of a misnomer. It doesn't tunnel through, it doesn't bore through. It just goes through. It just is through. To hell with your ideas of how walls work. The message I want you to take is that engineering is about properly understanding the problem. So, next time you're caught doing something crazy, like planning your entire life around casually bumping into your crush, don't blame yourself, blame science. Thank you. So remember, the next time you're taking that all-important Facebook profiler, 
Don't say cheese, say symmetry. <laughs> and that's the magic trick. There's magic in every single one of your pockets. So I want you to remember that the next time you look at Facebook for the three millionth time today. Just give a note of the magic in your pocket, because this is the thing about science. Magic tricks lose their luster when you know how they work. But science? Science just gets more impressive. Thank you for listening. Those predictions are based on our understanding of the universe at the moment. And if we see nothing, it means we've got it wrong. It means we have to rewrite science, and it means nothing short of a scientific revolution. And that is how finding nothing can be the best possible result. Thank you. How do you justify so much money going into programs that don't even work sometimes? From a sort of aerodynamic perspective, is the coolest insect. You're told. How much deeper science did you have to skip? That quite simply, if we understand all the connections in the brain, we would understand our identity, consciousness, etc. Do you agree with that? And if you don't, why not?